Wow, I have had quite the struggle this afternoon to try and get this uploaded, but fourth time's the charm, hopefully. I'm uh, trying on my phone now, and uh, I'm almost out of tea. This was Darjeeling tea. It was delicious and did help with the stress as I tried to get this baby uploaded. And today's my birthday, and I wanted to talk to you about resentment. I know a lovely kind of strange topic uh, for a birthday, but birthdays are a time when we sort of naturally reflect on our life that's come before and our hopes and fears for what's next. And there was a movie I saw yesterday, Paul the Apostle, that really struck with me. Um, because it viscerally made things that I had read about in the Bible come to life. And there's one particular scene where Paul is seated, well, laying down in the dungeon in Rome. And he's remembering the faces of the people that he persecuted, the people that he killed for their Christianity. And he is lamenting that and when he wakes up from this vision he he says grace is sufficient um, and I had never really thought about how the author of so much of our Bible and the letters in the New Testament was in a real way Christianity's worst enemy for a long time and it made this concept of forgiveness come alive for me. Um, I was counseling someone this past week who spoke of something that had happened to them as unforgivable. Unforgivable. And I think a lot of us harbor these sorts of resentments. We, we view people who've harmed us, who've hurt us, as having done things that are unforgivable. And I wonder about the harm we're doing ourselves. As I was reading this morning in Isaiah chapter 2, the view of the kingdom to come, it talks about how God will be the one who mediates the struggles between nations. And God will be the one who settles the fights. And consequently, they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Things that people once held and harbored for harm and defense will be made into tools that cultivate and increase the fruit of the kingdom of God. And I wonder about how many of us are actually willing to do that. And are we willing to go first? Are we willing to lay aside our resentments that we harbor as spiritual ammunition, if you will? Uh, things that we're saving up for when we finally tell that person off or when we finally quit our job. All of the things we want to tell people, how they've hurt us, what they've done wrong, and all of that. Are we willing to let those go as being unhelpful, unproductive? not worthwhile in the kingdom of God. Um, I don't know how many of us are willing to do that. But I've learned from my brothers and sisters in recovery that laying aside resentments is essential to growing in Christ. When we harbor these resentments, we're harboring ammunition that's like lead. And yes, we could use it to get back at that one person. But while we're holding on to it, it is poisoning our soul. Can we let go and let God? Grace is sufficient is a verse written by a man tormented by what he had done before he knew any better. 
I take comfort in those words. In fact, I have them tattooed on my back. Grace is sufficient. I have them around some orchids, which are a flower that is notoriously hard to keep alive and to maintain, but very beautiful. And I have this tattoo as a memorial to my mother, who our relationship was conflicted at times. Um, notoriously difficult and hard to keep alive and yet beautiful. She was both at times my best friend and my worst neglector. And there was a time when I did not live with her, even at an age when most people would live with their mom or their dad. And in fact, I didn't move back in with her until she was diagnosed with terminal cancer. By this time I was an adult and I had found Jesus and I had found a hope beyond anything I had ever grown up with. And I moved back in with her because I loved her and I was willing to serve her and to sacrifice myself and my well-being for her. And in so doing, I found peace and reconciliation and she found hope and restoration with Jesus she did die of that cancer but I am trusting in the grace that is sufficient for all of us that in her reconciliation with me and with Jesus she is covered by grace and therefore gains entry into heaven. Grace is sufficient. And I have a tattoo to honor her, even though she always told me that I could have a tattoo over her dead body. In a way, it's, it's a little funny. Oh, sorry, Mom. But it's a beautiful and poignant reminder to me. In seminary, I went to confession. I had some people I was harboring some resentments with. I was angry with them. They had questioned my call because of my gender and they were not the most pleasant people to deal with. And in my time of confession, my priest challenged me this. Go sit at the foot of the cross. Go gaze upon the crucifixion. Go gaze upon the agonized face of our Lord Jesus Christ and pray, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And you know, praying that prayer helped me to let that go, to set that resentment at the foot of the cross and trust in God to mediate something that I could not. So that's my invitation for you this Holy Week. If you have poisoned yourself with resentment, would you unburden yourself? Would you walk with Jesus in this final week and go be with him on Good Friday at the cross? And will you pray, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And will you celebrate with me on Easter, the empty tomb, a God who can conquer death, can surely conquer whatever it is we're struggling with. If we invite him and let him. May you be comforted with the hope you have received in Jesus Christ. And may you share your hope and comfort with others. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.